Okay, right. perfect. So do we have all three of us here today? Yeah, so it's uh, me, uh, Mary Elizabeth, and my, my wife is actually off in the distance as well. So. But we've got you on conference call on our side. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for, again, taking the time to meet with me. Um, we were just so interested in the open letter that Mary Elizabeth wrote, and we just really wanted to kind of hear from you guys and get your experiences with being a military family and hear from Mary Elizabeth and why, uh, what her thought process was when she was writing this letter. And so um, I just wanted to start off by introducing all of you guys for everybody that will be listening. And so we have uh, Colonel William Ray in the United States Air Force, his wife Susan, and then their daughter Mary Elizabeth, correct? That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So um, Mary Elizabeth, would you care to start by just sharing um, your open letter to my father, the airman, and kind of your thought process behind that and what it was about? Uh, yes, ma'am. Do you want me to go ahead and read it? That would be great, actually, yeah, for everyone listening. All right, okay. So, an open letter to my father, the airman. Uh, dear Dad, I want to let you know that I appreciate you. You will always be the first man I ever loved. I know that you work hard day and night to put these many roofs over our heads and that you want all of us to be better than you are. It's a lucky life we have that we get to experience all of these new places and interesting cultures. I love you, Dad, and your job and all it does for us. But, Dad, I'm hurting. This life of new exp- of new places and experiences also means new reasons my nails stay bitten with anxiety, new reasons to cry at night. New isn't always better. Sometimes the new school doesn't welcome you with open arms, but instead whispers gossip. Sometimes the new group of friends you've tried so hard to make end up abandoning you. Sometimes the new team that becomes your largest bully. Sometimes it becomes a chore to be involved for fear of further isolation or out of bitter resentment for this new place that took away your old feeling of familiarity. The day you took that oath and made a promise to our country, you tore us in too. I believe you are brave for all of your, all the sacrifices you've made and the service you have done for our country. I also believe that all the children of military parents, myself included, have to be their own kind of brave and retain just as much resiliency as their parents. There are over a million valiant men and women who protect this country and its values every day, but there are 15 million valiant boys and girls behind them who serve thanklessly. So, Dad, when I don't feel like going to school, no, it's because I'm scared of the lack of familiar faces. When I get angry at you for making me do sports, no, it's because I'm reminiscing of the team I already had before. When I'm hesitant to travel on vacation, no, it's because I feel the need to control the environment around me and sometimes try too hard to make it completely stationary. All this being said, know that when I say thank you, I mean it not only as a daughter, but as a grateful civilian. When I ask you about your day, I want to know that the Air Force has treated you well. When I hug you, it's because I know how lucky I am to have you. I hope someday that I can be as influential and instrumental in the world as you are in the military every day. You are my example for greatness and model for determination, and because of you, my dreams are hung high with the moon because you've helped me to see that I can do anything as long as I work hard. I love that you're my father, but but what makes it better is that you're the kind of father that wears a camouflage uniform every day. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. It's extremely powerful, and there's so much in there. What made you write this, or what was going through your mind while you were expressing yourself this way well my mom sent me the link for the um, whole art competition and everything and I saw that we could do writing and all that and I always try and take a a little bit of time to recognize like military kids and and, um, I just wanted to express that I've always expressed it in my own journals or talking with my friends, and I just thought it would be a great opportunity to share it with more people because I think military kids don't get a whole lot of recognition for the service that they do. Mostly, like, when I talk to people about it, they think, oh, you just get to travel a lot. Oh, you just live an awesome life. Like, what, you know, what could be wrong with moving so many times? You live in such cool places, but there is a lot of hurt and heartbreak that goes into being a military kid and just living this life that a lot of people don't really recognize 
And so some of this letter, too, was like my own kind of healing, I guess you would say, because I've just moved for my senior year. And so this really helped express a lot of ideas and feelings that were coming up at the time. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great awareness piece like you said, to people who may not know what it's like to be a military kid, but also a resource for military kids to be able to see that it's okay to express their feelings and that these feelings are normal. Um, Bill or Susan, what did you guys think when you read this letter or heard this from Mary Elizabeth? Uh, so uh, the counterpoint to, to Mary Elizabeth's perspective, or the counter perspective was I, I grew up in a military base. Uh, I grew up at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. And uh, my friends all throughout the, the 70s and 80s, they were coming and going and coming and going, uh, whereas I, my dad was retired from the Air Force. And so um, so I stayed there my whole life. But I watched these kids coming and going, and uh, and I had the perspective that Mary Elizabeth projects, you know, is that, that what could be wrong with that life? I mean, you're coming from Germany, and your next assignment is Italy, or you're coming from England, and your next assignment is Spain. You know, what, what could be wrong with that, that sort of life? And I couldn't wait to grow up and be that kid. And so... Um, it was, uh, I was envious of them and I, I really couldn't wait, you know, someday I was going to be just like that, you know, going off to these, these awesome places. And so I, it, it has taken me some time to realize just how hard it is for the, for the military kids. And so for me, that was a, a real wake up call to see that. And, and we've been, uh, we'd moved from Germany or excuse me, we moved from Korea and then to, uh, to Alabama and Alabama up to here. And, and, those are some hard transitions. They were uh, high school years, and those are just hard years to, to navigate anyway. And so my uh, my awareness was was increasing for certain. But uh, but then to read that, it just really put into perspective for me just how hard it is. Likewise, we had uh, some some, uh, some folks that at work that had just moved here, and uh, those folks were struggling as well, and, and their kids were struggling. Uh, one of my uh, one of the, the individuals in our office. Uh, his son didn't want to get out of the car to go into school for his first day of school. He was just adamant that uh, that he was not getting out, was not getting out, was not getting out. Just sort of having a meltdown in the in the uh, in the parking lot, and uh, we were all sort of comparing notes and how hard it was for our kids. And I shared this with uh, with with those uh, with the fellows at work that we all just got here, and they all just it gave us all a, a great new perspective that this is way more difficult than we ever experienced when we were growing up. And we always talk about you know how. How uh, things were were different when we were growing up, but uh, things really were different. And, and if you're a military kid, they're different from everybody else. And there's a very small group of people that understand what these kids are going through. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And it, yeah, it is interesting that you were a military child as well and had a completely different experience, which shows that all military kids have unique experiences. And so, um, Susan, what did you feel when you read this letter? I I was heartbroken, but I think that it was definitely therapy, you know, the expression that she got out. So, and I was proud that I sent her something and she went through with it. Absolutely. I mean, the words she wrote are really powerful and the ability, I mean, most people probably twice your age don't have the ability to express themselves in that way. So you have just such a great sense of awareness um, of your own feelings. And I think that is probably a characteristic you've learned as being a military child. And so while there are always um, strengths and weaknesses, what are some of the strengths you feel like, Mary Elizabeth, that you have gained being a military kid and moving around? <laughs> Well, I definitely think I've gained a lot of maturity and world perspective just from being in different cultures, even if it's just in the States, you know, different towns within the States or you know, different countries and all. They Seeing how other people live and how other people experience their own lives and just seeing how different it is from your own when you're living on base and all that, it really... You gain a lot of perspective for different um, cultures and different types of people and all, um, sorry, uh, yeah, different cultures and different types of people. And it kind of forces you to grow up a little bit faster than I think someone normally would. And so I feel like I have 
gained a lot of awareness for my own feelings as well, too, because of all the moving. And it is really hard. And so to try and get through that, you try and analyze all your feelings and you try and um, figure out what's going on just so you can make it better. So I definitely think there's a lot of maturity to just living this life. And I, I would chime in, too. I think uh, the military has done a, a really great job, too, in terms of recognizing the, the challenges and the difficulty that, that the kids have. And, I, you know, I can't really compare it to the 80s and 90s uh, or 70s and 80s because I didn't need those services then. But uh, but now the military has really done a great job, uh, you know, through MCAC and, and the organizations like yours to increase our awareness and, and our understanding of what the kids need. And so there's this this uh, this great outreach, you know, that, and, and these outlets that kids have uh, to help them uh, cope with those changes and uh, and those experiences and whatnot and help them process and analyze them. That, that's that been wonderful, too, as we've relied more and more on those those uh, those those necessities uh they've certainly been there and we we have appreciated it yeah and that's great that you guys have found those resources and they've been able to work for you are there any specific resources you guys have used that have helped you out the yeah, I mean, family readiness center has has been a constant i mean they you know for whatever your requirements are they uh, you know whether it's just somebody to talk to or you need to borrow some thing for the house i mean they're a constant source and so that that one has been certainly been uh, been huge for for us in the Air Force anyway. Yeah. So do you have you guys moved around a lot? Do you remember how many times you've moved or every place you've lived in? We have moved a lot. Uh and so this is my uh we're we're currently stationed at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. This is my eleventh assignment, but I'll let Mary Elizabeth she she has a different sort of counting method, so well, <laughs> Yeah, I um this is my 10th move, and I believe 10th school, I would say, from moving around, but it started off in California, and then Japan, Delaware, Kansas, wait, no, Japan, Delaware, South Carolina, Kansas, Egypt, um, Nevada, Korea, Alabama, and then here at Scott. There was a time when we, when we counted it, though. Every every new school year meant a new school, and, uh, and so that was uh, – we could always measure it by uh, by what year of school she was in. Yeah, that is a lot of places, and I thought I've moved around a lot. Um, what is one of your favorite places you guys have lived? Um, I would honestly have to say Korea, just because it was a really small school. Um, I went eighth grade and ninth grade there, and – it was just really nice because everyone there was so nice to everyone. There wasn't this whole class divide and, you know, upperclassmen all dumping against the freshmen, you know, because you couldn't cut out a whole fourth of your school when there's only 180 of you. And everyone, it made it easy to do sports there because the cuts were very, very limited. And so everyone, if you wanted to see your friends on the weekends or after school, you did a sport with them. And... You all lived in basically the same apartment building, so I could just hop down a flight of stairs and go see my best friends, and it was just the tight-knit community of it all. It was just really, really nice and a good experience to start high school with. That's great. Yeah, yeah sports yeah. are a really great way to um, stay connected because that's one thing that's consistent from state to state or most countries to countries as well. Yeah, when we got to Korea, uh, and, and Mel Elizabeth uh, started high school there uh, at uh, Osan uh, American High School, uh, the teachers immediately—I mean, they would—they would catch you in the halls to ask you, "What's your sport? When will I see you?" Uh, and like she said, you know, you, you developed a real sense of you know, if you wanted to see your friends, you're going to have to be in a sport because your friends were going to be in sports, and uh, and their time was going to be occupied with practice after school and on weekends and stuff. So we had a—it was just a great community there, and 180 kids. I mean, that was just a dream for us, you know, uh, Dr. Nugent was the, the principal there and they just did a fantastic job of integrating all the kids and, and getting them involved in, in various projects and stuff at the school. And it was just, it was a fantastic experience. And so on the heels of that, we went to Alabama and conversely, we, we tried to find the smallest school we could in Alabama so that we could sort of replicate that experience, that 180 uh, kids, small school, but at, at a public school, um, the smallest we could find was 1500 students. I'll tell you, I think anything beyond 500 students is just massive when you're coming from a 180-student school. So 
Uh, so it was, it was a, just a, a real contradiction to what we'd been, uh, what we'd experienced in Korea. Yeah, for sure. So did you guys experience any academic challenges with standards being different when you moved? I mean, you moved to 10 schools. That's a lot. Absolutely. Uh, and the, um, the military interstate compact, uh, we, we were uh, educated on that, um, a few years ago and that's huge. Uh, you know, just, a, just knowing that it's there, uh, and that I think, I think all, every state that we've lived in is a signatory to the interstate compact. But I think all 50 states, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, are, are signatories to it. That levels the field for, uh, for kids, you know, and so we had, uh, in, in one school, they, they didn't want to let the kids, we arrived, uh, we arrived in the school district the day before school started. And, uh, and so they told us that because our kids had not been there for spring training and summer training, that they would not be allowed to play any of the fall sports. And we just we politely reminded them of the uh, of the interstate compact and uh, the military interstate compact, and and they did their research and they came back and said, yeah, you're right, we're, we're going to let the kids uh, we're going to let them participate in sports. That is great news. That's good to hear. Yeah. And so, say, what were there other? So, what kind of schools were you guys involved in? Were it only public schools or DS schools? Did you ever do private school or homeschooling? Well, it's been mostly public schools, but in Korea, we did go to the Dodia school on base, and we also attended a private school that was embassy paid for in Egypt. Yeah, that we attended. The kids attended uh, Cairo American College in Egypt, and that was. As she said, paid for by the uh, by the uh, the embassy. One of the other things I'd say uh, about moving from uh, from location to location too is the grades and the and the standards, how they how they calculate GPAs, that sort of thing, are are very different. And so, um, with a lot of the schools that we've asked them to just work with us, please, to help us develop a consistent uh, GPA for uh, Mary Elizabeth. As you know, this year she's applying for college and whatnot, and so. Demonstrating that that she has had uh, you know, arts classes and AP classes and whatnot, those weights are are of course calculated differently, and so um, we've had to either highlight that on uh, on our on Mary Elizabeth's resumes as she applies to college, or ask the schools to help us uh, calculate this, you know, show us a standard method of of uh, calculating so that we don't show these fluctuations in her grades. And she's had great grades throughout. You know, that's not the issue. The issue is just Sometimes a tenth of a percent can mean a scholarship or not. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's great that you guys are so aware of that and are being your own best advocates for those things, even if they are small differences, because you're right, they do make huge impacts. Right. And so um, you guys have other children or other siblings? Yes, I have a brother who's a sophomore and another brother who's a freshman this year. Okay. And what is, uh, I know you can't speak for them, but in your experience, what is their uh, experience with moving around and transition? Have they become just as resilient as you are? I would say they're probably a little bit more so. Whenever we move to a new place or, you know, feeling emotional about it, I'm definitely the one to be more vocal about it and try and talk to somebody or bring it up in the family a lot and the boys kind of, um, you know, keep it a little bit more to themselves, like all their feelings about moving around and stuff. But you can definitely see that it is hard, especially, I would say, for this past move. I did not like the last assignment that we were at, and I was just ready to leave. And the boys, I think they found it more of a home for them. And so it was really, um, it was really disheartening to them to have to leave what they felt like might have been their first home. And right. with, uh, as with Mary Elizabeth, you know, we're sort of entering their most challenging years right now, too. You know, they're, they're in high school now. They, we've, we've been fortunate the boys have had Boy Scouts uh, and cross country, uh, and so those are their, their two big sports. And so when you go to Boy Scouts, you know, I like to camp. You like to camp. We should go camp, right? I mean, so there's a ready-made group of, uh, ready-made group of friends there. Uh, and cross country, very similarly, uh, you know, the boys like to run. But those those uh, friendships become you know tighter bonds. They become uh, deeper friendships as they get older, and so we're starting to see that now with the boys that uh, that they don't want to keep moving, and they they, re they develop some really great friendships uh, in our last assignment, and uh, and so they they were very happy there and, and would would have been content to to stay on there. So this this move was was uh, a challenge to them, 
And our oldest son, uh, Will, uh, he faces the same thing Mary Elizabeth did with moving his senior year uh, and having a new school in his senior year. And uh, and that's just not exciting, and not an exciting prospect to him. He he wants to develop those friendships that last a little longer. Yeah, definitely. Well, it sounds like you guys are really proactive and staying involved in sports and um, Boy Scouts is in another amazing way to stay connected and meet people and bond and just create leadership and growth skills for the rest of your life. And so it sounds like you guys really have a great foundation and using your strengths to the best of your ability and overcoming any weaknesses that you guys face. Um, well, I want to thank you guys for speaking with me. Was there anything else that you wanted to say or include or any advice maybe, Mary Elizabeth, that you would give to a military kid who's struggling? Well, I don't know. I'd probably say that, you know, you aren't alone in your feelings and that it's okay to feel bad about moving so much and that it is hard, even though the poster, you know, sadness for a military child is that, you know, dad goes away or mom goes away or something, it, it's still hard if you're just moving and that there are places, even though, you know, you might not know of them all the time because there is such a small group of people who will understand you, um, but when you find those people, it will really change your life, and it really helps a lot to have that kind of support system of people who are just like you. And I'll just add that we're really proud of her. That She's really become an ambassador for, uh, in our mind, for a military child, and, uh, and when she said that, uh, that she brings it up at, at the table and whatnot and, uh, and increase that awareness, I mean, it, that, that's not uh, – that's completely accurate. She has been very active in, in making making us aware, but also making our peers aware and uh, and our friends aware. Just what a difficult challenge it is. And so, uh, for those that that have kids that are experienced with this, you know, like Mel Elizabeth said, it's not just the going overseas and it's the moving, changing schools and all. And I think that's really applicable to, to any any family. You know, if you if you're if you're having to readjust to a new community or a new environment. That those things are certainly something to be aware of. Your kid is going to be struggling with uh, with some of the losses of, of the old community so, and the challenges of the new community. Definitely. Well, again, it sounds like you guys are really proactive as a family, and now with writing things like your open letter to your father, the airman, and getting it out in our magazine and sharing it with people, you're becoming an activist to other people and sharing your story. And um, I just think it's a great resource for anyone who's going through something similar. Well, we appreciate okay. MCAC putting that, uh, that competition on. Thanks for doing that. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the call for the arts. Um, we've gotten great feedback this year, and um, we're excited to share this in our upcoming On the Move magazine. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you again so much, all of you guys. Uh, I appreciate the time you guys took, and I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you, Jessica. You do the same. It was nice talking thank with you. you. You as well. Have a great day. Bye, guys.